So this idea might just be crazy enough to work. I'm proposing a radical shift in how we look at fats and how we look at food. And when you hear me out on this, it's all gonna make perfect sense. I wanna explain how we should start looking at fats a little bit different and how we should start looking at fats similar to how we look at carbohydrates in terms of the speed in which they digest. So you've heard of the glycemic index or glycemic load with carbohydrates before, right? Carbs that trigger a higher blood sugar and carbs that trigger a lower blood sugar that's more sustained over a period of time. Well, believe it or not, fats are the same way. They're molecularly set up with carbon chains. So if we understand how fats work and how they digest, we can truly comprehend that fats could be treated in a very similar way to carbohydrates in terms of the speed in which they give us energy, particularly on a ketogenic diet. Hey, you are tuned in to the internet's leading nutrition and performance channel. With everything that you need to optimize your life, whether it be through keto, intermittent fasting, or just making the best nutritional choices. So let's go ahead and break down some science. And hey, if you haven't already, check out highly.com so that you can check out all the gear that I'm always wearing in my videos. All right, so let's get to some education here. So the topic of this is different fats equal different speeds. And the first thing that we truly have to know is what happens when we go through fat digestion. And right now this just looks crazy, but I promise it's gonna make perfect sense. So please just do me a solid and stick with me through the entirety of this video, because at the end of it, you're gonna have a big aha moment and everything's gonna shift, okay? Everything will start making sense as far as keto goes. So first and foremost, let's take a big look at the small intestine. The small intestine is where most of the absorption or the digestion occurs as far as fats go. So these little black dots here indicate fats. Those are just big blocks of fats that we've consumed, okay? These little orange guys are called enterocytes and they become very important. And no matter what level you are or what education you are, it doesn't matter. If you know what enterocytes are, you're gonna be a cut above the rest in terms of comprehending overall food absorption in general. So enterocytes are cells that line our small intestine and it's their job to absorb the food that we eat. So I drew them like little Pac-Mans here because that's literally like what they are. They're just cells that line our small intestine that gobble up the food and they gobble up the food and break it down more to put it into our bloodstream. Well, the thing is, is that fats are a little bit different. Okay, what we have to remember with fats is in essence, fats are never fully digested, okay? Or should I say, they're not digested. And I say that with air quotes because, yeah, they're kind of digested, but not in the normal sense. You see, if you were to take something water-soluble, like a starch or a carb, you could mix that with water or any kind of fluid and it would be fine, it would completely dissolve. But with fats, as you know when you try to mix oil with water, it doesn't mix, okay? It doesn't mix no matter how hard we try. We can shake it, we can vigorously stir it, we can put it in a Vitamix. It's still just gonna be smaller droplets of fat. We're never fully digesting, we're just emulsifying. So basically all our bodies can do is package fats into smaller components. So what happens here is we have something known as pancreatic lipase. This is the first reaction that occurs with the fats, okay? So what happens is lipase comes in and it breaks them down into slightly smaller chunks. So then we move into step two, okay? Step two, now we just zoomed in on this basically. So here's our fat, okay, also known as a triglyceride. It's been broken down from pancreatic lipase from a solid polyunsaturated fat or whatever into a triglyceride or just a smaller droplet of fat, slightly emulsified by the, of course, pancreatic lipase, it emulsified. Then we have bile salts. So this is where bile and the gallbladder and the liver all come into play. I bet you didn't know that, right? This is exactly what happens. So the bile creates these things called bile salts, or the liver, I'm sorry. The liver creates bile and then the bile contains bile salts. And it reacts with the fat. And what it does is it chunks that up into smaller chunks of fat. Yeah, even smaller. So it's like vigorously reacting with it to break it apart even smaller. So now you're left with a small little component here that's fat and bile. Okay, lots of fat, a little bit of bile. This, this structure is known as a micelle. Okay, for those of you that want to dive a little bit deeper, it's known as a micelle. And basically what a micelle is, ends up being the carrier for fat, the carrier for fat into the body. So then, guess what? Now it's small enough that Pac-Man, the enterocyte, can eat it. So now we're in a cool position. So now we're like, yeah, we took fat, we made it smaller. Now our enterocytes, Mr. Pac-Man over here, can, can gobble it up, which takes us right over to step three. Pac-Man does some work. Pac-Man doesn't just eat it. Pac-Man actually works his butt off 
and actually packages it up with different things. Okay, so he packages it up with cholesterol, does all kinds of things, and literally takes it from fat to my cell and then turns it back into a triglyceride. So he's like a transformer maker. He's like the engineer behind transformers. So he has literally taken this fat that's been broken down and he reassembles it, but adds it with other things. So, I mean, this guy's, he's awesome. He's pretty darn cool for what he does. So now we have triglyceride plus cholesterol. We've consumed it back into a fat. And what happens there is it leaves that enterocyte and it goes into the lymph. This is where people are usually mistaken. It doesn't go into the blood. So the fats don't just go right into the blood, okay? So it's not gonna just go to our bloodstream and immediately just be good to go. It goes into our lymph system, okay? Our lymph system, guess what? Is moved and fluid by our movement. So when we move, when we exercise, when we're constantly moving, we're moving lymph, which means we're mobilizing these fats. Start doing the math. Keto works phenomenally if you're just constantly moving a little bit. So get up every 10 minutes and just move a little bit and get that lymph going, and it makes a huge difference with keto, like a huge difference. Okay, then it's the job of the lymph to travel around a little bit, and it dumps it to the liver. It dumps these into the liver, and then the liver is where it goes through the cycle of creating our favorite ketones, acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone, the three ketone bodies. So if we're in keto, this process still occurs. It just turns them into ketones rather than going through a whole different process where triglycerides are stored in different storage forms and, and yada yada. But now the main emphasis of this video, so now you understand how they're broken down and we understand that they're emulsified, they're not digested and it gives a whole new light to things. But what about different fats? What about things like MCTs that are said to absorb faster? And what about long chain fatty acids, short chain fatty acids? What all does that mean? Well, it comes down to the carbon chains. So when we talk about medium chain triglycerides, we're talking about medium length carbon chains. When we're talking about regular fats, we're talking about long chain fatty acids, carbon chains. So I drew a simple example. This is a carbon chain. This is a fat. It's not really what a fat looks like, but for all intents and purposes, it makes sense. So what's happening with a shorter chain fatty acid is it takes less time for the body to break these apart because there's not as many bonds. So therefore, the fat breaks down a little bit faster. Okay, so a shorter chain fatty acid or a medium chain fatty acid breaks down faster, whereas a long chain fatty acid actually takes longer to break down. Why have we not looked at this before? Well, simply because fats have been overshadowed by carbs and sugar for so many years. And this isn't anything like disparaging towards that world. I'm not even going down that path. I'm just saying that we have focused on carbs and sugar for so long that I reckon that we haven't even focused on what we can do with fats. And yes, I just said reckon. But if we can understand this process, we can understand how we can layer different fats for different rates of absorption. So if we need quick energy, we can have a shorter chain fat, like a medium chain triglyceride. If we need longer bouts of energy on keto, where we know we're not gonna eat for a while, we wanna eat the longer chain fats, we wanna eat the fish oils, we wanna eat the saturated fats, they have a place. You wouldn't wanna eat saturated fat right before your workout, but you might wanna consume MCT oil. You see, MCTs, believe it or not, skip a lot of this process. It's a whole different video, and actually I'll link out to that video. We can actually add a card so you can watch it if you wanted to. But that's a whole complex situation where it basically bypasses this process and goes straight into the mitochondria, straight into the cell. But we don't always just want quick energy. So this is a simple comparison to like consuming a high glycemic carb. That's why I said view them as glycemic. We look at carbs as glycemic, whereas we'll say, okay, I need quick energy, so I'm gonna have, this is hypothetical, a Gatorade because I need the sugar, okay? So quick energy, we have the Gatorade, we get the energy. We crash, but we get the energy. Okay, then on the contrary, we think, I need good sustained energy, so I'm going to have some sweet potatoes that are gonna give me energy and carbs throughout the rest of the day because they'll digest slower. We think this way with carbs because it's where our brains are, but now, as we have the fat movement and the keto movement, we need to start thinking this way with our fats too. And if we do, we gain a huge upper hand in terms of how we can capitalize on different energy spikes and different lulls in our energy and understand those on a ketogenic diet or just on a more fat dominant diet in general, whether you're on keto or you're just fat adapted. 
So this will break it down. Hopefully this made a lot of sense. If you need more explanation on this, go ahead and comment down below. I'm trying to do videos where I actually answer comments and answer other questions that have come in to make it a little bit more clear. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel and I will see you in the next video.